Hi, this is a, a WASP electric cart. Uh, it's powered by two 12 volt batteries put in series, which uh, means that they have the positive and negative joined up in a loop to create a 24 volt battery. Um, this powers two um, uh, 12 volt, uh, 150 watt uh, DC PM motors. PM is a permanent magnet motor. Um, so in essence 300 watts of power, um, which is uh, plenty uh, to get this car uh, moving uh, quite rapidly off a start uh, and will reach a terminal speed of uh, 6 miles per hour with the gearing that it's been given. Um, uh, we've just tested this machine uh, with me on it, uh, I'm approaching 20 stone and it will accelerate rapidly uh, with me on it and uh, certainly uh, shows no sign of uh, uh, lacking in power. Um, the machine uh, runs with a, um, uh, a potentiometer throttle and a, um, a, a drive which is capable of producing a 60 amps. This unit here is the drive, this is really the black box as it were, the electronics which go on inside here which allows the uh, uh, throttle to ramp up and build up the speed slowly from uh, uh, 0 to 6 miles an hour. It doesn't allow the batteries to give all of their power at once, uh, which would in essence burn the motors out. Um, so it's a gradual throttle rather than just a simple on and off. Uh, this is protected with a uh, 40 amp um, uh, circuit breaker fuse. Um, and we also use this as a simple on and off device. So as the cart is uh, in storage, um, if the batteries are connected, uh, you have a, an off position. And then to turn the cart on, you have an on position. This will trip also if there are any electrical faults. As a circuit breaker, it will just simply click itself off to protect uh, the uh, um, controllers. Now I'm going to uh, what's the front of the vehicle. Uh, we mentioned before it had uh, a... Uh, uh, potentiometer throttle which is down here. Um, this little device here um, uh, has a plunger inside and sends an electrical signal as a, a potentiometer it uh, changes the, uh, the the current and sorry, the voltage um, and the more you press it down uh, the more voltage it will allow. So this is a very simple device uh, it is a very fragile unit, so we have also a throttle stop here, uh, which you can see, which is adjustable. Uh, so you can wind the cart right back to two miles an hour uh, for somebody who's only just starting, uh, so that the throttle pedal literally will only go to there. Um, or for somebody who's a bit more experienced, you can open it up as it is now um, to its fullest potential. Um, the uh, uh, adjuster has to be there and it has to be set so as the throttle pedal does not go too far and will push the plunger out of the back of the plastic potentiometer controlling housing. So that must be set, very important. And there we go. Uh, the cable runs up the steering column and normally you would tie wrap these. Uh, this is just a demonstration machine. Um, so we go up the steering column to uh, a throttle Sorry, I keep on a, a, a controller at the top, and the main controller is a key switch, which again, in conjunction with the main on and off switch, you turn that on to turn the machine on and off and lock, and nobody can take your machine away and drive it. Don't lose the keys. At the very top here, we have a small switch, which allows a neutral position, which is facing uh, dead towards you. Uh, then we have a uh, reverse position to the left hand side and all the way to the right hand side is the forward position. So when you want to reverse a cart um, you simply take your foot off the throttle. Now you must take your foot completely off the throttle otherwise the system won't work. And then move the switch through neutral into reverse. Then you can press the throttle pedal again and the vehicle will go backwards. And the same applies for going into neutral. Uh, and into first again, remove your foot completely from the throttle pedal um, and uh, then back down again and it will drive forwards. The reason why you have to remove your foot completely is so that uh, the machine doesn't try to go forwards when it's going backwards, which will have disastrous consequences to the electrics. <laughs> okay, so that's the first thing there. And then general maintenance thing as we're going around the vehicle, um, uh, 
before you start uh, and run the vehicle, obviously make sure that all of the switches are in their off position. And uh, then we can go down to some oiling points on the cart. Uh, each brake axle has a small oiling hole there. If the vehicle is to be painted at home, um, just be sure that uh, you don't get paint into the oiling hole. Um, but uh, if you can uh, simply put some uh, uh, normally an engine oil and an oil can onto there uh, daily and uh, onto the other side here as well daily so as you can see the brake operating um, so that this doesn't seize up and particularly if you're storing it over winter uh, a bit of oil all around won't go amiss at all and if we come further to the front of the car the steering has the same uh, system um, on the main steering joint here you can see uh, there's an oil hole there and another oil hole at the bottom of the steering column. So if those are oiled, that would go great. Also, uh, whilst we're on things that move, the main kingpin bushes are uh, a nylon bush and don't really require a lubrication other than the initial lubrication. Um, but the rod ends themselves, um, if you can lubricate those with an oil can as well and work it in, work it with the steering, then uh, that'll get the oil into the joints where it's needed. Again, certainly once a day and uh, give it a good douse uh, if leaving it over winter. And the other thing is to remove the batteries over winter time, keep them inside the house so that they're nice and warm. Batteries don't like being uh, sat outside or uh, in very low temperatures. Um, make sure they've got a full good charge in them and they get a trickle charge uh, every month during the winter time just to make sure that they're topped up fully and ready for next time. Okay, to start the vehicle, as I said before, we turn the main master switch to on. Uh, the main key switch, uh, we turn that on. The centre button is in neutral, so we can climb on board. This cart is designed for uh, teenagers and smaller, and uh, I'll show you later, but it will actually um, uh, slide telescopically smaller for smaller children and it will also have the ability to take the machine and put it into two sections so it will easily collapse up into the hatchback car or if it's on full length it will easily fit into a, a, an estate car as it is. Now, all switches on, all feet on board. Um, we've got a throttle pedal on the right hand side and a brake pedal on the, right, on the left hand side. Um, what we need to do now is to simply put it into forward position and squeeze the accelerator cable Accelerator nice and slowly, and you'll see it goes forward. And to do the same, through neutral, into reverse, and then press the button again, and away we go. Forgetting to press the right button. <laughs> now into forward, up to park, into neutral, and that's it. <coughs> As I said before, the uh, main frame is a telescoping type of frame where you have a larger tube here and a smaller tube on this side. The car will actually split in the centre section. Um, this allows for two benefits. The first benefit being that a smaller driver can get in and drive the vehicle and as they get older uh, the vehicle can expand with them. There are two main bolts here uh, go straight through the chassis and these can easily be removed and then uh, on both sides and then the whole machine moves forwards. You'll see four inches further back uh, there's a, another hole set and that will move up into position for that hole there, which shortens the whole vehicle by four inches, which is normally adequate for a smaller driver. Um, then obviously the bolts are then put through and tightened up again. Um, the other benefit for this is that the vehicle can actually be split into two if you've only got a small car um, for driving around, um, and then uh, the, the car can easily be folded into and uh, handled in two pieces. Um, and that would simply be done by taking those two bolts out there, uh, loosening the cable, and then just simply pull the machine apart and uh, you can collapse it up into a, a small box, uh, allowing it to be transported.